Hi folks, today I've got another film photography video to share with you. We're going to be cross-processing some color film, C41 color film, using standard tools and techniques that are often used in black and white film photography. Use the same tanks and reels. I'm going to use Rotonol developer like I often do with Tri-X or Ilford HP5+. Plus. I shot this film in a Canon EOS 650 film camera from 1987. The way I developed it, I used 8 milliliters of rotanol, 400 milliliters of water at 68 degrees Fahrenheit. I developed for 15 minutes. I agitated continuously the first minute and then 10 seconds a minute thereafter. After that, I gave it five water rinses as a stop and a five-minute normal fix in Ilford Rapid Fixer. Negatives were scanned on an Epson B550 at 24 dpi, 24-bit color, no sharpening or other uh, features were selected, just a standard scan. And I scanned them in color because the negatives have a bit of a color tint. In this first one, you can see the magenta tint. Now, when I click the black and white button in Lightroom, of course, that turns it into a nice black and white image. I'm zooming in here where you can see the grain on the sky. And perhaps you would want to compare that to the grain in Triax or Ilford. I personally think the grain is uh, comparable in some ways to those. It has some little tiny black spots. If you zoom way in, you can see those, but it, it works good for me. And here you can see the how it held the detail in the sky. I would think on this particular picture, the camera probably uh, exposed more for the sky than it did the shadows. And uh, But I still think that's a good usable black and white image. Now, uh, you know, a lot of times black and white film is not available like in the town I live in. So I wanted to figure out how to use this color film. Now, this is my wife shooting a digital camera, and I'm taking her picture with that Canon 650. And uh, I believe I used, of course, that 50 millimeter 1.8, tried to blow that background out a little bit. And uh, here it is as a color. You see when we switch it, we put that in Lightroom or your favorite editor and you can get rid of that magenta tint by turning it into a black and white or a grayscale image. And I think it's very usable, this film is. Uh, and I believe similar results will be had with any C41 film from what I'm get, beginning to uh, understand about this. Uh, there's some little uh, dove eggs. The doves build a nest on our front porch in the summer, and these pictures are from back in the summer. They're an older roll of film that I had not developed yet. And uh, I think that's a good picture. I believe this film performs quite well as black and white film. This uh, picture here is taken in the shade of our porch, and you can see the grain against that white siding around the background behind the plant and uh, tell that it's uh, it looks good. That, that grain's not too bad. That's usable. Now, this particular frame here was taken on the front porch. It was way overexposed, I believe, and because it blew that sky out, but instead of having a red tint, it was more of a like a bluish-purple tint or something. But I want to adjust down the brightness and up the contrast and then push the black and white button. And we turn it into a black and white image that's interesting. But, the, of course, the sky's still blown out. Once it's blown out, there's not much you can do with that. And uh, But that was an interesting picture. And I wanted to show you one how they can occasionally turn blue instead of that reddish look. Now, this picture is an old standard I often use. In many cameras, whether they're digital or film, I like to shoot this old light fixture in my house. I can see how the light drops off, how the camera exposes for it. If I can see the detail in that globe, how the shadows roll, you know, the light rolls into the shadows, uh, the grain or the noise in a picture. And that's why I included that one. It's something I can compare to other films. And it, this film compares quite well. So if I had to use a black a color film, and I wanted to just shoot black and white images, I'd be happy to do it. Of course, if I really loved the pictures, wanted them in color, I'd set it off and get it done. But you can develop your color film as black and whites this way with this process for less than 20 cents a roll of film. So if you can't find black and white film in your area and you're, you need, you're out and you don't have time to mail order some, you can pick some color film up, use this process, and... Uh, develop them as black and white pictures for under 20 cents a roll thereabout and still have some good usable images. And I, I think that's uh, something that can be very helpful to those of us in rural areas where we don't have a store that sells a wide variety of film. And uh, there again, I've uh, 
reposted uh, the process I used to develop this film. Uh, in case you didn't get it the first time and you want to write that down or take a picture or something of that so you can try it yourself, that information's there. And uh, But, uh, yeah, if you like developing film and you like black and white, I highly recommend you give this a try. It's not an expensive thing to do. It's a lot of fun. Just get you a camera, get out there and shoot some pictures, shoot you a test roll, you know, and uh, see what you get. Well, thank you all for tuning in. And as always, uh, have a nice day and thanks for watching. Hit that like button and subscribe button if you're inclined to. And we'll see you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.